You know, food trucks are showing up everywhere, even at the Utah State Capitol. Hi, I'm Chad Booth. Welcome to the county seat. And I'm Cameron Porter. But what do food trucks have to do with county governments? Well, actually quite a bit, and we'll discuss that during our show today. But first, we thought that we would take some time and see what all the fuss is about. And maybe get some lunch. Come on, let's go. I think it's just a fun atmosphere too. I'm honestly loving looking at all the different options, whereas it's a little harder to go into a restaurant, look at a menu for a while and say, oh, I don't like that, I'll go check somewhere else, it's really easy, and then I'm just sitting out with my friends enjoying food. Thank you so much, Jessica. I appreciate yeah, you taking some time. You can't talk anymore. Your food's here. Oh, my food's here. I guess I'm done. There you go. <laughs> All right. We're here with some of our new best friends that we just made. They're our food truck friends for the day. We're going to try out our food for the first time. That is delicious. That is insanely good. That is really good. Chad, how's yours? I am a veteran of the red food truck. It's consistently delicious. All right, Chad, how's your duck face? So My what? Your duck face. You know how to make a duck face? There you go, there you go. Duck face. All right. I love these food trucks. One of my favorite things about living in Salt Lake is they have great food truck. The only thing missing right now is I wish I was at home with a delicious quesadilla from this food truck watching the county seat on my couch. I mean, we have a good time interacting with our customers. We get a few regulars and it's nice to see them. Uh, there are all kinds of interesting challenges. You have wind, you have flour, you have all kinds of stuff going on. So with the heat and managing dough, you gotta be really fast and really good. And uh, especially with the 1100 degree oven in there so yeah so we deal with a lot of heat and uh, just good pizza. I think the fact that they're mobile clearly makes them popular and they can show up at festivals or concerts. The permit itself, my permit, is statewide. Um, we do need permits specific to the counties for the trucks themselves though. So. I'm from Grand County, Moab. But you don't see food trucks out there very often do you? sometimes during the tourist season. Whereas in a restaurant, you are able to just drain your water. Um, we have the in-between step of a gray water tank, so we have to drain into the gray water tank on the trucks, and then when we get back to the kitchen, we drain the trucks into a typical drain like you'd probably find at a restaurant. Um, and so there we would have the same regulations as they would. I really like the waffle trucks, personally. Do you have a favorite food truck? Would that be your favorite? I don't know, this one right here where I got my steak quesadilla today was pretty excellent. So, <laughs> that might be my new favorite. I see you're enjoying that. And uh, with, while Cameron has his mouth full, I will tell you that it's time for us to go to a break. You can see why this craze is so much fun. We'll talk about the business side of it when we come back on the county seat. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil vale Falls. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. 149 million years in the making, dinosaurs once roamed this land. Now they're found at the Dinosaur National Monument. Let's take you beyond the bones. We call it Dinosaur Land. You'll find it offers adventures and sights not seen anywhere else in the world. Come to Dinosaur Land, Vernal, Utah. You'll want to stay forever. The dinosaurs did. Shopping in Davis County has never been better. Experience Station Park, Northern Utah's premier gathering place for shopping, dining, and entertainment. With over 100 shops, Station Park is something for the whole family. Or explore the shopping possibilities this season under one roof at the Layton Hills Mall. Both are conveniently located north of downtown Salt Lake, just off I-15. 
Come take advantage of special discounts and a wide selection of stores. Visit PlayInDavis.com for more info. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking about the food truck phenomenon and its relationship with county health departments and health regulations to make sure that the food you get off your waffle truck is really good for you, not to mention tasty. Joining us for our discussion, Dave Spence, who's the environmental health director for Davis County, Tyler Plue, who is uh, with the uh, Utah County Health Department, and Kelsey Shepard, a regional director for, strangely enough, Waffle Love. I got a plug in for you before we even started. How do you like that? That's awesome, man. Food trucks, to me, seem like they are a more difficult process to manage than uh, a regular fixed base restaurant. And, and I guess primarily the reason is they're harder to catch. A restaurant you can find, you can walk right in and um, uh, you know do an inspection, make sure that everything's on the snuff, but food truck you gotta catch somewhere. Uh, what's the process? It's kind of crazy. So me being the regional manager, we have we have stores and both food trucks. So food trucks are a lot harder. You got to find locations to park. You got to um, kind of a commissary kitchen that you bring your truck at every night. So it's a lot harder. In stores, you just everything's just there. All the moving pieces stop moving. It's a lot more simple. So you, your truck has to have like it is tethered to a land-based kitchen. Yeah. So every food truck has to have a commercial kitchen that it comes back to every night. That's where they prepare everything. They dump their wastewater, fill up with their clean water. Basically, just the hub for the truck. For yeah. us, for us catching it, it's 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 a little bit easier than than you would think, and it's the same way that the public knows where they're at. It's off Facebook, Instagram, social media. So for us, we have all the social media sites for for any truck, and when we need to go do an inspection, we do we try to do two routine inspections on any restaurant, whether it's a brick and mortar or a mobile. And we try to do two a year, and so when it's our turn to go do those, we either go to the commissary, like like I was talking about, or else we try to catch them in the field. So use Instagram or social media. If, if somebody wants to sign up, Dave, uh, in Davis County for a, uh, you know, they say, we've got a, I got a truck, I now want to do food, what's the process? So they, they come into us, and one of the things we do require with a mobile uh, food truck is that they give us a schedule of where they're going to be. So that makes it a little bit easier to, to try to find them. Uh, one of the things that's made it easier to, to find them is these have become more popular. Just look for the big crowds. People all around know where these are gonna be and they don't show up usually one at a time now, it's several of them at the same time. Before somebody actually gets a license of, to serve food from a vending truck, um, what is, what's the paperwork process? How do they, how do, they do that? So in, in Davis County, it's very similar to what a, a brick and mortar uh, restaurant does. They submit an application, they submit uh, the location of their commissary, and then we go through a, a review process. Um, one thing that makes mobiles a little easier to do is they can come up to our, they just drive their restaurant on wheels up to our office instead of us having to go out to that restaurant. So we can just go out of the parking lot, do an inspection, complete their application and go from there. Yeah, a, a yeah. part of a part of that plan for us too, and I imagine it's probably probably similar with you guys is we like to do what's called a plan review, where they need to submit plans of the truck, uh, different sinks, different grills. Also, we want to see a menu so that we know what they're going to be cooking, what they're going to be serving, and you know we've seen hundreds of these you know over the years, and so it gives us a good idea of if do they have the capacity to to make on the truck what they're telling us that they're going to make. And also, we want to tell them before they build it, we want to see those plan reviews so that they're not going to build something that we want to prove that doesn't meet the food code that we have to enforce. And so we want to see those plans before so we can tell them, go forward with building it or make, make a couple changes. So Okay, so I met a young gal. She was like barely in high school. Her dad bought her an old trailer. She sold cupcakes. So she obviously had a commissary kitchen. Might have been at her home. I don't know. 
and she made cupcakes and cakes, and she just modified this trailer with a counter and uh, I, I guess whatever it had in it. So is, is that within the, uh, I mean, how hard is it to make something ready for your inspection? For us, I mean, if it's gonna be open food, it, it needs to have a three compartment sink so that it can wash, rinse, sanitize, clean things. One needs to have a hand sink so they can wash their hands, and then needs to have a place to catch their water. Other than that, it depends on what the menu is, what type of grills and things that they need, but triple, triple compartment sink is what we call it, a hand sink and some place to catch the water. Those are kind of the basics. All right, very good. We're gonna take a quick break on County Seat. I got a lot more questions for these guys. We'll be right back, and I'm getting hungry for a food truck. See you after the break. There is a place where looking out means looking in, where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever, where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered, where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. All local products have a story of magical places, real people, and delicious recipes spanning generations. So go ahead and discover flavors you've never tasted and friends you never knew you had. Utah's own Discover Local Food. Farm Bureau has always been there to fight for the needs of its members. With discount programs on items ranging from vehicles and ATVs to health and wellness. The membership fees aren't big, but the results are. We've been around since 1916, and we're not leaving anytime soon. Utah Farm Bureau. We work for those who work to feed the world. Empower America, and America empowers you. Help ensure the future of oil and coal. If you have a stake in Utah's coal and oil industry, join us for the sixth annual Uinta Basin Energy Summit, August 31st through September 1st. Visit co.uinta.ut.us to register today. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking about yum food trucks today and, uh, and, and their relationship with county health departments. Now, b before we take the commercial break, I talked about the cupcake girl and you said she actually falls under a different category than say Waffle Love where they're cooking things on site because all of her stuff is prepared before. Explain that to me. So, so the Department of Agriculture has what they call a cottage food industry permit. Uh, that provides uh, people they can prepare things at home, whereas the health departments, if it's a ready-to-eat food, we do not allow things to be made at home and, and sold to the public. So basically, if she sits in her, if she goes in her kitchen and she's done her thing with food and ag, and she bakes the sweet rolls and the cupcakes and wraps them all up and throws them in a trailer, she doesn't need the triple sink, she doesn't need the gray water, she just shows up with her trailer and sells them? I would say she's got uh, different regulations and different qualifications. Than what we would do. Does that create a problem? It just creates the necessity to alert our employees that are going to go, our inspectors that are going to enforce and, and 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 do inspections. They need to be aware that th of those circumstances that they might not need a permit from us and don't shut them down on site. And and do you, do, okay. you, do you ever get do you ever get somebody at a, like a, a big food truck rally coming and say, hey, wait a minute, I want to complain. That girl doesn't have a triple sink in there and blah, 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 and she's selling and you're not closing it. Do you ever get that? How, how about, how about let's, let's talk to the industry on this one. I mean, <laughs> oh, 
Do you guys have uh, people complaining against each other in their trucks? It does happen sometimes, but we, we've gone, gotten inspected enough and we've talked with the health departments enough. We kind of know what to expect and what we need to do to not get shut down. Some of these newer trucks, they don't necessarily know all the rules and regulations, so they're getting shut down. And they get upset at us sometimes. Like, what the heck? They're doing those same things. Right? Well, actually, we're not, man. <laughs> I, would so, even, I would even go further and say that there are people that have gone and uh, done the permit the way they're supposed to, and they're one of our best uh, clients that we have is the health department, and they, they wonder why others don't have to meet that qualification. So that, that's been an important kind of tool for us to keep an eye out on, on what's happening at these, these uh, rallies. Catering trucks have been around for a long, we used to call them catering trucks around for a long time. And you know, so everybody thinks of the Creasy truck in Salt Lake uh, County. And then all of a sudden they make a movie about a, a chef in New York and he loses his job and he does a food truck and now everybody wants to do food trucks. So what does it take to actually put one of these together? It's kind of a challenge. So as far as the health department aspect goes, you gotta you meet with them all the time, submitting plans, reviews. And you got to actually get some guys or a company to come and build your truck. That takes a lot of money, a lot of resources, and a lot of time. Now, once that's built, then you got to focus on the food and then get your social media going because you got to get the word out to people, let them know where you're going to be, or hook up with these food truck leagues or food truck underground companies that you can all get a bunch of food trucks together and open up that way. So you've got two different county health departments represented here. Um, and my question is, if you meet if if you meet the standards for Utah County, and and Tyler's satisfied with you, does that mean you have to jump through the hoops all over again for Dave's County? How does that work? You do. You have to go through the process just like you did the first time. But doing it a second time, you kind of know everything. So after that, it goes a lot smoother. Is there Most of the rules are the same. Is is there like a kind of a state guideline or standard that you guys work off of? That, so that they are similar. I mean, you you know, you could have Daggett County just go crazy and say, you know, you've got to have the cow tied behind the tray, or you know, your food source, your milk's got to be fresh or something like that. I mean, we, we the 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 FDA releases a food code. The state of Utah adopts it as the, the Utah Food Sanitation Rule, mm -hmm. and so each county follows uh, fo follows that sanitation rule that's been adopted. There are a little discrepancies in between each county, little differences, I should say, of just what we might require with a commissary, um, what we might require to be on the truck, because as with everything, uh, it's, it's a little gray, it's not black and white, but I'd say mostly across the board, uh, you know, it, each county's on par with what we require of, of the food trucks. So it's not a huge problem for you to move a waffle love truck out of Salt Lake uh, into Utah County or? No, not a big problem. You just have to get it re-permitted again, but you don't really have to make any changes to the truck. Is that expensive to permit in multiple counties? Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> it's pretty pricey. You guys are proud of your fees. <laughs> I'm proud of fees. <laughs> What's the biggest problem you encounter in enforcement? Well, I think you brought up a topic that I'd kind of like to talk to a sure. little bit. Um, you said that there, a, a chef from New York all of a sudden comes to Utah and wants to open up a, a, a brand new truck. So we are seeing people that have a vast amount of experience that build these very expensive mobile units. And then we see other examples where it's literally a camper, you know, doing, trying to do similar things. Uh, that has been a challenge for the health departments. Uh, we used to see, you know, they're making easy to make things. Now they're making, there are mobile units that have full menus that they could outcompete a, a brick and mortar restaurant. Uh, that's been a challenge to kind of adapt and to see those different different changes. I'd probably say one of the real quick, if I can, we're just one of, kind of what we do is we do just real quick what we call uh, mobile mobile stops and mobile inspections, where we won't even do a routine inspection on on Waffle Love, and it, we'll just go we'll go to a roundup and we'll run by every mobile truck and we'll just make sure they have three things going: one that they have water two that they have hot water, and three that they have electricity. And that's just that it's something that we do see a lot of problem with those three things is just because at a brick and mortar, if you don't have lights on in your restaurant, no one's gonna come in. I mean, they, they won't be able to see in it. And if you don't have, if you don't have water, then, then most likely other places in the, in the neighborhood don't have water too, and so 
there'll be a shutdown kind of the neighborhood. But as with a mobile, if, if they're busy and the water runs out and they need to go fill up water, we've found a lot of times that they will continue with business because business is money. I mean, that, that's what it is. That's, that's why they're out there is to make money. And so it, that, that, that is a problem that we see with and we try to, we try to enforce that. We try to let them know the importance of, of having those things while they're, while they're working. As we were preparing the story for the show, I, I asked one of the truck owners that we interviewed, I said, do you ever run out of stuff? And he says, yes, it happens a lot. Uh, is that one of the problems uh, is, is refrigeration and, you know, if you're going to cook stuff, you got to keep things refrigerated or you're going to have a problem. It, it, I mean, is that a problem for you is just being able to maintain the integrity of the food on board during a day? And do you run out sometimes? Uh, in the beginning, we did a lot. Yeah. But now we've kind of got the system down how we build the trucks. We put a lot of refrigeration in there. We constantly, we shut down the shifts. So we have time to come back to our commissary kitchen, restock, and get the truck full again. And then if in case we do run out while we're out on site, we have systems in place so people go out there and restock the truck while it's out there. Do you have a big, like a big 10-gallon water jug to fill the water tank with? <laughs> yeah, we've done stuff like that before, yeah. But How try, to, try to picture yourself if you're running one of these wagons or a food truck and you're at an event where there's 2,000 people there and you run out of water and you've got food to sell and you've got a line that's an hour long. It's... It's hard for those people to close down and go try to replenish their... What would be your advice to them to be prepared for that? Because I know, I, I'll bet you everybody's going to get overwhelmed at some point. You know, today is the day cinnamon waffles are the hottest thing in the marketplace, and everybody wants one. Well, and, and the advice, again, is, is waffle love knows now. I mean, know how much water you're going to use. If you're going to be serving 2,000 people, how much water are you going to use? Do you need to make your tanks bigger? Do, what do you need to do? And so it's... A lot of it is just that trial and error, and they, they do a great job now because they've been around for years and, and they know what to expect. So. The tough thing too, I mean, you have issues when it's 100 degrees out and you also have issues when it's 20 degrees out. Yeah, yeah I can see that. <laughs> Wash your hands and eyes. We're gonna take a quick break on the county seat. Come back with our conversation and final thoughts about food trucks. We'll be right back. There's a little place on a Utah map I was raised where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high, and the stars come out at night. Oh, there ain't nothing like being raised in the basin with the Ute Reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. When the road takes you farther than you knew possible, when the world is more beautiful than you've ever seen, when home is more comfortable than it should be, this is when you know you're in Kane County. The perfect mix of rural and urban, culture and adventure. Glendale, Orderville, Kanab, Big Water, small towns with more to offer than just peace and quiet. Kane County, Utah. Find the new you. Let's be honest, you don't know much about Beaver County. Well, let me tell you about it. It's the birthplace of outlaw Butch Cassidy and adventure Philo T. Farnsworth. Some of the best skiing in Utah is at Eagle Point. You've got camping, Canyon Breeze Golf Course, Crusher and the Tushers, Beaver Territorial Courthouse, Snowmobiling, Renewable Energy, Pioneer Car Show, Squeaky Cheese, Ghost Towns to Explore, Best Water in the Country, Paiute ATV Trails, Old Frisco Kilns, Horse Racing, Hunting, Fishing, and it's a good place to live. Beaver County, mountains of fun. I could tell you more, but why don't you come and see it for yourself? Color, it's something that can be seen. But have you ever wanted to reach out and touch it? Experience it. In San Juan County, Utah color comes to life like nowhere else on earth. Color can be more than an abstract. Color can be your gateway to a new world. Visit San Juan County and explore the past, present, and future in a way that you've only dreamed of. San Juan County, color your experience. Welcome back to the county seat. Our topic today is food trucks. Uh, as soon as this taping is over, I'm headed to Soho and uh, I've been getting a little bit of uh, food. So a question, what advice do you have, any of you, all three of you, for people who are deciding to get in this business? It's not fair to say don't, okay, <laughs> from your part. What's your advice to somebody who thinks this would be a fun way to make a living? Yeah, I think the best advice would be Get your plans together, talk with the local health department where you're at, 
and work with them. We, we have made a concerted effort in Davis County, I know throughout the other, other dis, uh, health districts along the Wasatch Front and throughout Utah, to really work with industries. Uh, we had several uh, town hall meeting style type meetings where we sat down with industry people and we wanted to know what worked and what didn't work. And I think it gave us some good ideas, but we, we try to work with people and, and get them to where they're permitted and they're doing, they're, we're protecting the health and they're out selling their goods. Do people come, tend to like overbuild in the wrong part when they're planning something you bring it to and you say, well, you didn't really need to do that, but you do need three sinks. Does that happen? It is always interesting to see what happens when, <laughs> when we do a plan review. What's your advice, Kelsey? I would say do your research. Meet, meet with the health departments, meet with the cities, and maybe even other food trucks that are successful. Kind of get an idea of some of the do's and don'ts of food truck world. I mean, if I went down to Costco and bought like five of those fancy wearing waffle irons, you'd actually give me advice on how to go into business against you? Maybe not like that. We <laughs> might give you some pointers on <laughs> some things to do. <laughs> um, I do have one question for you. You had talked about how you... Um, um, uh, the county health departments, uh, you know, communicate back and forth. Do you have like a naughty and nice list that you communicate back and forth with? Like, well, this guy, you inspect early, expect often or something like that? I, I wouldn't, I, you know, we don't call it a naughty and nice list, but what we might, uh, we, we do have communication back and forth. Uh, the, one, the one thing that we do communicate a lot in between counties is, is the co use of a commissary kind of like what Kelsey talked about where you have to prepare. We do have to discuss, you know, because we do allow um, trucks to come into Utah County if they own their own commissary within Salt Lake or within Davis. And so there is conversation back and forth to make sure that, yes, they do have their own commissary because we can't go up and inspect it because it's not my jurisdiction. But I do want to make sure that they, they are active with Davis, actively using it and making their food there, preparing it, maybe see some of their inspections just to verify that, that, that it's in use. So That was a big change for us. Uh, once we started doing that, that allowed people to, to have businesses that could cross the counties, and that, that was a good move on our part to, yeah. to do something proactive. Allowed a lot more trucks to, be, to, to go out and make business. So. Okay, Kelsey, one last comment for you. If somebody wants to try a waffle love, where's the most regular place they can find your trucks? Oh, man, our trucks? Probably... Uh, Jordan Landing, there's an America First Bank right there, and we're there every Saturday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. All right. Make sure you check us out. I know where I'm going. Or you can follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and we have our website. You can find us anywhere. Excellent. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Thank you. You didn't bring samples, did you? Next time. Okay, very good. Thank you for letting us into your home each week on the county seat. Remember, local government is where your life happens and the safety for your food truck food. So. Get involved, be part of the solution. We'll see you next week on the County Seat. If you'd like to share this video with your friends, well, you do that right here. If you would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you do that over here. If you'd like to interact with us on the county seat, that happens over here. If you want to watch the next episode of the county seat, you can catch it Saturday night at 11 or Sunday morning at 8.30 on ABC4 Good For Utah.